And today on the bench I've got a 1981 vintage Telefunken CR100 stereo radio recorder. When I was a kid it's called a Ghetto Blaster. Well this unit is quite well appointed, it's got all the tone controls, how posh is that, four bands of radio and the tape recorder. It does have a missing switch cap, that's a shame. Hmm. You can connect external speakers to it, plug in a turntable and whatever micro is, probably just another input. And you can power it off the mains, which would be a good thing because it takes eight big batteries. <laughs> Yikes. The tape tape probably doesn't work, but at least it opens. It's probably all it does. Well, being a very early 80s model, I don't think the tape deck's going to be too complicated, so that's always a good thing. But um, what's wrong with this? It's dead. <laughs> no life at all. And uh, that could be something really simple. You never know. I suspect all these knobs need to come off. They're coming off quite nicely. Oh, <laughs> I spoke too soon. And these are a bit tighter. There we are. Thumb screws that actually do something. That's uh, quite novel. That come off now? Yes. Well, for the screws, as always, probably quite long ones. Well, that's a bit of a limit now. One in the battery compartment. There we are. Look oh, how long that is. The screws won't fall out with gravity. <laughs> no? I wonder if it just lifts off anyway. Oh yes, yes it does. Just a speaker plug in the way and we're off. Look at all these lovely retro. I <laughs> can't get enough of it. Well, I reckon this will be the radio tuner board, tone control board under there and this will be the power amp and probably there's a preamp because that's where the phono input is. Here we've got the power supply and <laughs> I see a blown fuse. Let's check. Yes. Well, let's fish it out then. It's no use in there. Well, it's a 2 amp time delay fuse. <laughs> that seems quite excessive. What's that? 500 watts? Ah, no, it's on the secondary side. <laughs> Don't panic. I'd imagine this fuse is just for the AC supply, so it's right next to the transformer output. And we've got this plug here, and you've got um, a red and a black, which will be from the batteries, no doubt. Uh, and two yellows, probably the low voltage AC. And the yellow wires go all the way to these very old diodes. This is a bridge rectifier, and there's the resistor. That looks a bit warm, doesn't it? <laughs> got a bit burnt. Might be okay. Hmm. Well, whatever we do, I think we need to find out why those have got so hot. It's all a bit tucked away for my liking. Looks all right, pain to get out. So I'm just going to put 12 volts in as if from the batteries. That's you. So I can see the orange wire sticking out there. So that's the positive terminal. Just clip that on there. And the negative goes on here. Let's turn it on. Oh, a bit of LEDs there. Hmm. Not much else going on though. Well, nothing looks too untoward really. There's radio on. Well, it's not blowing up. <laughs> it's working. It seems okay. Well, so far I've not found a fault apart from a blown fuse. <laughs> Maybe we should try the speakers on it. Hmm. It's just this plug here. Huh. Well, listen to that. Working. Oh, oh, hang on. This speaker, I can feel the vibration there. This, there's nothing coming out of there. Hmm, time to get the scope on this. 
I've actually got the service manual here and I can see the speakers go pretty much straight through a capacitor to these amplifier chips. Quite straightforward. So power comes in on pin 1 and the audio signal goes out pin 12. Let's check it out. Well these are the amplifier chips just here, the left and the right channel I guess. And there we got it. There's output there. What about this channel here? Should be the same. And we got nothing. Flatlined. Wow. And the thermal imaging camera tells a similar story really. Looking at that. The one on the right's quite warm and the one on the left's cold. Hmm. Okay, looks like we found the problem. Luckily these chips are still available online, old stock, which is what we need. Um, but I've got to get the board out, which looks a pain in the bum. <laughs> Typical 80s construction, we've got oh, cables everywhere and ribbon cables which look a bit short. I'm not sure how we'll get on with that. Maybe it'll tip up. Um, I think the tape deck's going to have to come out. There's one on the motor there. Oh, a sneaky one just there with one of them cable tidy things in. It looks like it might just lift out, but this cable here on a plug, an infernal cable tie there. Let's cut that off. Let's pull that up. What else have we got? Oh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I think this is for the record mechanism. I've not seen this before. Like a brake cable off a bike. Now I've sussed it, let's pull this rubber piece off. And this lifts up. And that just unhooks. Well, that was easy. Well, the way all these cables are orientated, it makes me think I can just hinge this up. But I'm a bit worried about these plastic posts. They're really long. Might be a problem. Yeah, it's still stuck. Ah, cheeky screw there. It looks like I'm going to fetch all this out after all. Oh well. Are you supposed to get this out stuck behind these screws? Same each side. A little bit of case flexing is required. There we go. <laughs> oh, I can't catch a break here. There is a plug. I can reach it. And we're away. Let's have a look underneath. Look at all this PCB routing here. God, it's all right angles. There's some definite signs of heat stress around here. Is that a bit of melted solder? Wow. Yeah, that chip's gone. Let's quickly unsolder this. There's a lot of copper here. It's taken a while to warm up. Come on. There it goes. Well, we'll have to take the heat sink off, but um, look at that pin spacing, that's really uh, <laughs> strange. <laughs> Just undo these screws. Fortunately, you can still get a brand spanking new one from eBay of all places. I hope this is new. Well, it looks it. I was wondering if it might be pulled from an old thing, but this looks absolutely pristine. Hmm, that gives you a bit of confidence. Pop it into the heat sink there. Ah. 
hopefully the legs just line up nicely or when they do and the status on these pads this is not the first time this chip's been changed I think I'm going to power it up now through the AC connections these are the yellow wires just chuck a resistor in there doesn't matter which way around the wires go being AC well no high current no smoke doesn't look too bad see if the thermal imaging camera gives any clues away oh oh the new one's still warm warmer than the other one oh what's going on <laughs> I might just swap them over just see if it's the chip or the surrounding circuit. Yes, there's something wrong here. Something on that channel is causing the chips to get a bit warmer. Yeah, I wonder whatever it is might have caused it to go in the first place. What is it? Hmm. I need to be a bit more scientific about this. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to break the track on uh, pin one so I can measure the incoming current on each chip. Then I can start messing around and just see exactly what is the difference. Pin one's a 12 volt supply and it goes to a few places as you can see, it's quite a big track. I'm just going to have to splice it right by the pad. And the same here, I can do it in the middle there, it's a bit easier to get at. Then just solder a wire on either side of that so I can measure the current. So this needs to be in the right socket, current the input there, and DC current, DCI. <laughs> Good job in the coppers. <laughs> Same with this one. Let's see what we got. Oh, right, oh, there's quite a difference there. Not only like 200 milliamps on the one and what, 13 milliamps on the other. Well, that confirms what the camera says. Just trying to work out what would make the amplifier chip draw more current um, when it's not the chip itself. There's lots of things around here. And being 40 year old equipment, there's a lot of capacitors, electrolytic ones around here, um, doing all sorts like bootstrap and compensation everywhere. Even the input and the output coupled through a capacitor. It's worth checking those out. But I've just noticed these capacitors. Uh, these are quite modern. These are not 40 years old. In fact, if I look very closely, I can see that these are a Panasonic FM series. They didn't come out till back 2003. There's probably a date code on here somewhere. Yeah, looking at this one, I can just about read it. It starts with an 08. Well, that'll be 2008. And looking around the board, these have all been changed. They're all high temperature as well, 105 degrees. That's a fairly new thing. This thing's had quite a rebuild already. So I'm running out the capacitors because they're 15 years old at most and I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, more likely it's been reworked. We could have some dodgy soldering, maybe a bridge joint or something like that. The pads around here are a little bit knackered but they're a good connection. I've checked those already and when we swap the chip the fault stayed in the location so in the absence of any better ideas I'm going to try some of these transistors just to sort of isolate them from the circuit an example would be the mute function is uh, done by transistor 106 and 206 for this side um, I'm going to try this one on this channel just to see if that makes any difference let's try it now Look, the current's dropped right down. We've got 8 milliamps there, and this has dropped even more, 7 milliamps. That's quite close. 
Well this transistor is a PC945 which is a pretty standard sort of NPN transistor, nothing really special. Just check it tests okay. So these pins on here. Well, there's not much wrong with that. <laughs> no, can't fault it. So it's not the transistor itself. The transistor's not faulty, so it can go back in. There's not a lot to this muting transistor. It's just there, it just shorts the um, input signal to ground. Just the resistor. And just a mute line. Not sure why that caused trouble. Now it's back in, see if we've still got the problem. And no, the problem's gone. Well, that's good news. Let's try the old shake test. <laughs> Give it a bit of a bend and a tap. It's holding steady. Can't make it go wrong. Ah, unless I put my hand on the back of the uh, amplifier chip itself. But that's nowhere near the levels of it was before. Yeah. I think I've disturbed some dodgy soldering. I'm pretty sure that's the root cause of the original failure, so I'm quite happy that that problem's been sorted. And we also learned that this has already had quite an overhaul, so that's probably why the tape deck works. <laughs> I'm surprised to see this working. Inside you can see the heads. They don't look bad not worn at all, the roller's not cracked. I clean it a bit but I don't think we're going to find much up with this at all. And looking at the drive belts, they feel good. They're not bad at all. Look at that. I think these have been changed already and not too long ago. Let's give the head a little rub with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. It doesn't look too bad at all. Is there any muck on there? A little bit. It's not bad at all. Might as well give the arrays header clean as well. This tape will be passing over that just the same. And the capstan. I'm going to use the trusty 1960s degaussing tool on here. I'm going to connect the speakers back up to this before I put it together just to see if we've got any other trouble I can detect. Let's connect an aerial to this so I can actually uh, check the radio is working. Aim into focus. Aim Let's check the function or switches. Yeah, they were. That's the volume. No crackles there. Balance. Perfect. And what we got here? Face and treble. All good. Okay. Well, that's a clean bit of health for that part, so I'll just take my uh, current monitoring off there and put it back in the case. Take my antenna off here. I'm just going to scrape some of the solder mask off here where I've uh, <laughs> sliced it just so I can make a bit of a solder bridge. Same here. <laughs> it doesn't want to go. <laughs> oh, we'll try this one. There you are. Probably too much flux. There we have it. <laughs> Let's 
clean some of that flux off. You don't have to clean this off, it doesn't cause any harm, it just looks a bit untidy. Although some of this blobby soldering looks untidy anyway. Let's not forget to put the aerial cable through this gap. <laughs> That'd be embarrassing. So we'll feed it in from that side. And it should. There we are. <laughs> Pop some screws back, especially the ones that go underneath the tape deck. Let's put them in loosely for now. In case the board needs to jiggle about a bit. And a sneaky one just behind there. That's a pain to get to. Slightly lift the cover up. Try and get the aerial cable back on that socket. It's not easy to get to. Gotcha. We also need a 2 amp fuse. Try not to empty the whole packet. <laughs> Come on, oh, let me out. Let's get the tape deck in. Let's plug in the heads. What else is there? A few things. <laughs> Try and line it up on the posts. There it goes. The motor goes in there, the raise head plugs in there. I feel like we're missing something. The record switch, pick that through there, and there we are. And add a little rubber bumper on there, like that. Pop a few screws in. Let's see if I've got a better screw than that. That's bloody wood screw. It's a bit more of a match. Not quite the right size, but we'll see if it goes in. Looking good. Let's plug the speakers in. Well, the radio's working just fine. <laughs> Let's try the tape layer. Let's try a good old test tape. Oh, this damper's going to cause me trouble. <laughs> Three kilohertz. Well, both amplifier chips are looking just right. Same temperature, perfect. Enough of that. <laughs> well that's working nice. Sounds quite good. Got a good bit of tone to it. Bass and has the bass. Treble. Yeah, working great. Left, right. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Let's put the cover on. Time for the knobs. 
I'm going to turn them all down because there's not a centre position you can see easily. I'll just line the little marker up with the minimum setting. Well, that's back together and working nicely. It's turned out to be a fuse and a bad amp chip. Huh. It's a shame that switch cat's missing. It's probably gone up someone's hoover. I mean, it's not like you could buy one, could you? Oh, I mean, you wouldn't make one, would you? Well, that's fairly convincing, eh? <laughs> Look at that. Well, that looks better. <laughs> Catch you next time.